I live in a house that was built in like 1850 something. The front hallway is very drafty. There is plaster and behind the plaster that's falling is late for a laugh. And I want to know laugh. how can I laugh? Thank you. How can I uh, make it efficient without the high cost of ripping everything apart? Well, you can have cellulose insulation blown into those walls, and um, that's a professional job. It's done from the outside where small holes are drilled in, the, in through the siding at every wall cavity space, and then the insulation is blown in. Um, usually it's monitored, so it's blown in, blown in at the right pressure, so the uniform filling of the cavity. And that's something that would be included in work done after uh, through home performance with Energy Star. Uh, is this something you want to do yourself, though, just for that foyer area? Um, yes, because blowing insulation from the outside is just, it's just not going to happen because the plaster yeah. has to come down because it's so old. So what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing the laugh there. Is that, am I pronouncing it right? The laugh? Yeah, L-A-T-H-E, but it's so, pronounced laugh, yeah. Okay, so I, I'm assuming that um, for me to put something up over this uh, lath, because the plaster will have to come down to make it efficient because it's so drafty and you feel the cold air coming in, do yeah. I just put insulation up? Or do well, I have to rip the lath down? I live in an old house myself. In? Yeah, I live in an old house myself and I did this. Uh, I took the lath off in some rooms, and you're right, it is very messy. Wear a respirator if you do this. I think this is the best approach. You just chip away the plaster, pull the lath off. Uh, you're going to run into a lot of small nails, so be careful, be aware of that. Um, take all the nails out of all those pieces of lath and recycle that wood. And then you can insulate that wall cavity, put up a vapor retarder, and then drywall. Alternatively, if you don't want to go to that expense, you could just put um, extruded polystyrene over the plaster and then drywall over that. Now, you're going to have some finishing details to deal with. Do you have any electrical outlets, or is there a window or anything in that foyer? One, one electrical outlet, but then I'm not actually going to take away because then what you're saying is the walls are going to come out further towards me. That's which is right. going to change That's the right. construction of the whole door frame. And so that, yeah. to me, is I'd rather rip down and then put insulation. But I just want to know if that was the best thing to do. Are, are you fairly handy? I am a <laughs> jack of many trades, master of nothing. <laughs> well, hey, Joe. It's, it is. It's a do-it-yourself job that you can do. Just make sure you wear a respirator. Um, yeah, have that paint, way. but wait a minute, if that's an old house, make sure that's not lead paint. If it is lead paint, then have that professionally taken care of before you get in there. There is no paint, it was wallpaper. Oh, okay. It was wallpaper. So, then you, I Joe, just, you might be able to do this. Joe, this is Marilyn again. There was a concern about what's wait, in wait, that lathing that... There was just some concern about the content of old lathing that it might contain a high percentage of asbestos in the plaster. Is that something that um, we should be concerned about? I haven't heard of asbestos in plaster. In 1850s house, she's more likely to have horse hair in it. Um, there has been, there was asbestos in joint compound. That might be what you're thinking of. Joint compound that's used for seams and nail, covering nails and um, drywall, but that <coughs> stopped in 1977. If you are ripping down a wall that's drywall, uh, joint compound at the seams, um, and you think that was put up before 19, 1977, that could have asbestos in it. But not the plaster or the lath. The lath is just wood. Yeah. Joe, but you, I, we also have to look yeah. at... We also have to look at the fact that this is, I'm doing king's labor on a pauper's penny. So the most efficient way for me to do it so that my home is warm would be for me to labor myself and rip it down. So that's why my concern was, okay, can I do this? 
So what I'll be looking at is once I take the, the lath off, I'll just have beams and old shingles stuff I'll probably be able to see when I'm done, right? You'll have studs and they'll be full width. They won't be like the nominal width studs we have. They'll be real two by fours or two by sixes. Um, it depends. I mean, if the house is post and beam or mortise and tenon, you, it might not have um, just regular wall cavities, but you'll have areas where you'll be able to put fiberglass insulation in. I think you can do it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Andrew, you had a Ma question? Yeah, well, I was just going to add that, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with a space like, like she's talking about, um, I, you know, I would recommend having a contractor come out and kind of look at the whole thing because he may, sometimes you can attack, put the insulation in from the, from underneath or above, you know, and as long as they can get into that cavity and, and, and input the insulation and blow the insulation and you may not have to rip everything down. Um, if it's in that bad a shape to rip it down and you are going to attack it yourself and you're going to, you're put in uh, fiberglass insulation or something like that in the cavity once you've exposed it. You know, again, before you do that, fiberglass is a filter. So make sure that if you see any air holes or any holes in the, the, at the floor or at the ceiling that you caulk that or stick something in it, foam it, seal it or something like that so the air isn't going through that cavity. Thanks, Andrew. That was a good point. 